Please, oh God, bless A. Khan Sahib and his son Hamza. Sabiji says, apparently there is no hope left for Pakistanis, but when I see noble people like you praying, I my faith in humanity is restored after hearing your prayers. Your prayers are so soothing for the ears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you abundantly. Ameen. Well, yes, we should have hope, definitely. Because if we read any scriptures and carefully study the teachings of any great saints and prophets who have told about the future of this planet, they all say the same thing. There will be a time of great difficulty, unprecedented, like never been before in the world, a great time of confusion and deception and war, especially spiritual war. So that's going on right now. But we should not be discouraged. We should realize this is leading to world peace. The final kingdom of God on earth, long, long prophesied. It is come. It is coming. And the more you see, the more you see these horrible things happening, the more you should know the end is very near. And the reestablishment of pure Islam and the kingdom of God on earth is coming. So, yes, let us keep praying. Sarmad Ishfaq says, Babaji, do you know Dr. Umar Farooq Abdullah? He is an American Sufi and has a Nurani face such as yours. I don't think I know Dr. Umar Farooq Abdullah. Abdullah, no. Sorry. Aisha Khan says, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Stay blessed. Sir, please also pray for us. Protect evil peoples and magic. Thank you, Aisha Ji. Wa alaikum salam. Oh, God, thank you for your protection of Imran Khan Sahib and all Pakistanis who are fighting for Hakiki Azadi and Pakistan to be reestablished in the Holy Land of Pakistan, Khalistan. Please protect us all and please protect all good people. Protect everyone <laughs> from the evil forces and from magic. Yes, you don't have to worry about magic because as I've said many times, magic cannot be effective when we turn to God and pray to him for protection. He can counteract all magic easily. So just go on doing zikr, anwar shiraks, uh, has some flowers, I guess, sending. Thank you very much. Sarosh Ahmed says, Amin to all prayers for Pakistan, Imran Khan, and supporters. More power to you, Babaji. Thank you very much, Sarosh Sahib. Muhammad Riyaz Tindi Kamboj says, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Stay blessed, sir. Please also pray for us. Protect evil peoples and magic. Wa alaikum salam, Muhammad Riyaz Tindi Kamboj Sahib. Yes, thank you for your prayers for me to be blessed, and I pray for you also to be blessed for all people to be protected from the satanic forces, the evil people, the Dajali servants, this, the chumchas of Dajjal, I call them, and from all their magic tricks and laser technologies that they can use to project holograms in the sky. <laughs> Fatima Tuzara says, Assalamu alaikum, sir, I daily watch your zikr, and you always say that Pakistan is becoming a better country, but how is it possible day by day the house old thing are becoming expensive. The petrol price is, yes, wa alaikum salam, Fatima ji. Pakistan is becoming a better country. Doesn't mean economically better. Economically, things are becoming very rapidly worse and worse. But as a result of that, Pakistan is becoming a better country because the people are turning to God more and more. Isn't it true? The more we turn to God, the more we become better. The more Pakistanis turn to God, the more Pakistan becomes better. And the more the economic situation goes down, the more people are turning to God and praying and therefore becoming better. So, oh, she goes on. So petrol prices increasing life here in Pakistan is becoming hard. People are committing suicide. Then how will Pakistan change? Pakistan will change by the mercy of God Almighty. As people turn to him and pray to him more desperately, and stand up more courageously, trusting in him. That is how Pakistan will change. That is my understanding. Hamza Alim says, MashaAllah, dearest Babaji, we're really thankful for your prayers and efforts for Imran Khan. Kindly pray for us for protection from evil. Ya Malik, please protect Pakistan, especially Imran Khan Sahib and his supporters and all people from Pakistan and Khalistan, land of the pure, and people all over the world and all over God's creation. We are praying for everyone. 
Oh God, please protect us from evil. We're praying the Lord's Prayer every day. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. And forgive us our trespasses, our debts, our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh God, protect us all from evil. And may your kingdom come on earth. And Zion Khan says, Sir, you once said that we are not that body or mind, but we are the one who is witnessing this movie. Who is this the one who is witnessing? Is this our soul? Yes. We are the soul. We are the eternal soul, the eternal servant of God. Uh, we are real. And this movie we are watching, this virtual reality of this creation, good morning, this virtual reality of this creation, this is what God has created as a sort of illusory production for us to learn lessons. But it's illusory in the sense that it's very temporary. It will end very soon. Our lives are very short, you know, maximum 50, 70, 80, 90. Hardly anyone lives to be even in the 90s. And so this life is very, very short. But even this existence, this planet even is temporary as far as I understand. I may be wrong, but, but certainly... Uh, I believe this whole creation may or may not be right. I don't know. But different people, different saints and different prophets and different scriptures say this world is temporary. So in any case, it is a temporary show, this movie that we're watching, this three-dimensional movie that we're living in. This is temporary. But we, the soul, who are witnessing, we souls are all witnessing this virtual reality production. Uh, this soul is eternal and is real, and we will really e return to God Almighty and live eternally in his eternal kingdom, the kingdom of God. Okay. And Babar Kayum says, how are you, sir? I am fine, thank you. Zain Khan says, are we just watching these movies, or are we taking discussions too in day-to-day -day affairs in life? Are we controlling it, or is it already predestined? Oh, very good question. Uh, we are watching this movie, but we are also participating in it. Just like if you are playing a computer game, which is like a virtual reality, you are watching the display, but you are also, you have some role, not total freedom, but you have some role in the movie. So certainly we ha are taking decisions, not discussions, sorry. We are just definitely taking decisions too in the day-to-day -day affairs in life. We are not free to do whatever we want, but God gives us some freedom, and we do certainly have some free choice to make. Uh, so everything is not predestined. There is destiny there, but that destiny can be changed, and the destiny is changed. When we make a good decision, then the destiny is changed for the better. If we make bad decisions, then the destiny maybe gets worse. But, it, but so yes, uh, there's a very good example. I love this example. Hazrat Ali al-Islam gave this answer to the same question about predestination. He said, uh, the person who was asking him was standing there. He said, so lift up one leg, pick up your right foot. So the man picked up his right foot. You can do that, right? Yes, that's your free choice. Now pick up your other foot. <laughs> you can't pick up one foot without putting down the other foot, right? So you don't have that freedom. So it's like that, very good example. So we have some freedom, definitely, but not very much, but exactly how much we need, he gives us. God gives us the freedom that we need and we can learn. And God gives us freedom because if we did not have freedom, we could not love him. We could not serve him with love. If we didn't have freedom, how could there be love? Love means we must be free to choose to serve or not to serve. So we could not serve God in love unless we had freedom to refuse to serve him too. So he always gives us that freedom. We can always reject to serve him, uh, or we can serve him. Or actually, we, we can't reject to serve him because we're always serving him, but we can decide to serve him the way he wants to be served or to serve him the way uh, we, he does not want us to be served, which is still serving God. <laughs> okay, good question. Thank you very much. Zain Khan Saib, he goes on, Sir, do we have complete free will or some part is predestined? Some part is predestined. Most of it, I th think, is predestined. <laughs> good morning. Hola. 
So what do you think? Is it a big part, a small part? Well, definitely there is predestination. A lot of things we are destined, we cannot change. But there are a lot of things that God gives us the freedom in which we can choose one way or the other. So, we don't, so definitely don't have complete freedom. Only God has complete free will. God can do whatever he wants at every moment. Uh, the more godly we become, the more freedom we get, undoubtedly. But uh, our freedom is, at this time, quite limited. We have to learn to use our freedom responsibly and properly. Then we are given more freedom. But at the present time, our freedom is pretty limited. We uh, have to accept so many things that we don't want to accept, but we have to accept them. We're not free to do whatever we want. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always 100% free to do whatever he wants. And because we're his servants, he gives us freedom, a little bit of freedom, so that we can serve him in love. That's all he wants. He wants our love. That's all he needs. God has everything. But the one thing he doesn't have is our free love, freely chosen love. So he gives us that freedom to choose, to love him and serve him in the way he wants or not. So we don't have complete free will, but we definitely have some free will. Iftikhar Ahmed Naqshbandi says, Babaji, Islam alaikum, have your spiritual wife also met the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, face to face, as you did. What's your belief about hell? Is this weak made person capable such to suffer so great punishments that we have heard them from our ulma? My good spiritual wife has never told me that she met the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, in pers person. But she has met many other spiritual personalities from, amazingly enough, different religious traditions, as I have to. Um, but uh, what is my belief about hell? Well, hell really means separation from God. He, wherever you are, if you are remembering God and praying to him and trying sincerely to serve him, even the most hellish condition is heavenly. So the real hell means when you've turned away from God. That's worse. Than, but there are places where there is greater suffering. Those places are called hellish places. You may call it different planets in the galaxy. Some are more hellish and some are more heavenly. Uh, but So those planets are called hellish planets where there's a lot of suffering. Or those places on planets where there's a lot of suffering and a lot of uh, fighting and hypocrisy and cheating and uh, no peace of mind. That's a hellish place. So there are many hellish places on this planet right now. <clears throat> but uh, is the weak made person, this weak made person capable to suffer such great punishments? Um, as the ulama say, well, in every religion, there are religious teachers and they talk about these hellish, hellish punishments. My understanding is the real reason for all those punishments, God does not want to punish us. The reason for those punishments are only to wake us up. We have to suffer sometimes in order to wake up to our real self and our real responsibilities and our real opportunities. So suffering like that, that God gives us is good for us. Even hellish punishments, they are for our benefit. But I don't know exactly the punishments you're talking about, but in every religion there are horrible, horrible punishments that are described. And they're mainly meant to frighten people to do what is good. Um, but that's not a very high standard of religion. Uh, as the great poetess uh, from Basra, uh, <laughs> what's her name right now, Rabia, she, she says, I don't care for heaven. I don't want to be in heaven. I don't care to avoid hell. I don't mind being in hell. I just want to serve uh, my God and Holy Prophet. If we can serve God, and then we're in heaven. If we're not serving God, then we're in hell, wherever we may be. And the punishments may get greater and greater if we refuse to serve him. Not that he is, you know, needing our service, really. Um, but we need to serve him. And if we don't serve him for our own sake, he may send us punishments. That's the true understanding of it anyway. You still in contact with aliens after you were taken and shown their plants? Is a personal question. Yes, I am still in contact with extraterrestrial beings. I don't call them aliens. They are our brothers and sisters or mother, like 
my spiritual mother is a non-human being originally from a different planet. Um, so I'm still in touch with her, mostly by, uh, by telepathy. I've seen her, but that's quite rare. Uh, but I sometimes receive guidance and instruction from her. Okay, thank you all so much. We will end now, inshallah, continue every day about this time, starting 6.30 or 7 most mornings here in California, most mornings in Pakistan. We will do zikr and then have a session of questions and answers and comments I'll take. Okay, thank you all so much. Allah Hafiz. May God protect us all, and especially may God protect Imran Khan Sahib and his imprisoned PTI workers. Oh God, please release them.